Well, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Hopper with Jeffrey Cranford. Yeah. We're talking about uh, passage in Colossians. I'm enjoying this series. I really am. Good. Where Paul was praying for the betterment of the people in Colossae. Yes. You mentioned a while back in one of our other videos about the gym time that players use now to strengthen their body, which then strengthens their game. Right. How does gym time strengthen my game? What's that connection? Well, first of all, there's been a real evolution in this. I mean, you go all the way back to Gary Player. He's kind of been the consistent right. voice in this. He, do, he does hundreds of setups uh, every day for, you know, uh, unbelievable. In fact, if you have him at a dinner party or something, he'll get down and start doing push-ups <laughs> for you right there at the dinner party. Uh, and then you kind of got into at least what were very visible. Johnny Miller was at the peak of his performance. He was winning. Unbelievable. The Desert Fox went in the desert all the time. Right. And he was, you know, 30 waist or whatever he was, big strapping guy. And then he started lifting weights, he worked out on the farm got big and he claimed that it really hurt his game and then so everybody's oh stay away from the gym don't get in the gym whatever you do and then what began to happen is Tiger Woods came along and Tiger began to lift and there's a lot of scrutiny on that did he lift too much did he not but I think it's fair to say now that everybody pretty much everybody out on the on the big tour that has the ability to be able to do it has a trainer uh, if not traveling with them certainly there's the PJ Tour van and they are at least doing uh, not just cardio, but core work. They do a lot of core work, stability work, not only to uh, increase club head speed, but also to pre protect them against in uh, injury. And then you see guys like Brooks Gapka and Dustin Johnson and these guys. These guys are now massive athletes. These guys are well, you know, 6'2 to 6'5, some of these guys. And they're just, I mean, they're, they're in there. They're literally doing pressing 220, 230 before they play golf. It's just kind of unheard of. So there's been a massive evolution, really, in, in the whole gym rat thing. Yeah, there has been. Yeah. And strength matters. It does. Yeah. Not bulk, necessarily, but strength. Right. The right kind of strength. And there may be some argument for bulk. Now looking at Brooks Kopka after sure. one of three majors in the last, how many, seven or eight tournaments. So. Yeah, well, absolutely. <clears throat> Um, when Paul was praying, the next thing that he prayed was that they would be strengthened with all power. Power, yeah. Yeah, according to God's glorious might, for the attaining of steadfastness and patience. That is, power gives you something. Right. Right. How does the power of God make me more steadfast and patient? Well, again, we alluded to this in the series already, but I think of John 15. You know, Jesus is very clear. I'm the vine, you're the branch. Apart from me, you can't do anything. Right. So because he gives this metaphor, there's a drawing from the root. There's a drawing from it's that sap that runs through a tree. It's the nutrients that run through the branch, uh, through the vine and into the branch. I mean, obviously, we know that now, uh, analogously, as being the Holy Spirit. And we underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. People, they, some people say it's the, it's the lost uh, part of the Godhead, you know, the Holy Spirit. We talk about God the Father, we talk about Jesus, and then some people don't really think about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is God with us now. Jesus was with men for a few years. But he said, it's better that I go away right. because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. In other words, I'm going to send my presence, my Father's presence, my presence, and I'm going to put it in you, and that's the power. And it's that power that really enables us, empowers us to do the work that he's called all of us to do who are followers of Jesus. And so it's critical. Power is critical, but it is not from ourselves. It is from the Holy Spirit. And I have seen mistakes in the Christian community, where people talk about power, the power of God, and they kind of stop there. And they get enthralled with the power, right? not recognizing that the power has a purpose. That's a great point. And the funny thing is, these other things, you know, that I have endurance and steadfastness and patience, those aren't as glamorous as the power. Well, that's right. That's but we right. we need to be careful that we're saying, God, you seem to be doing powerful work in me. Why? Absolutely. Ask why. Absolutely. And I would say this last thing. You know, when you think about God's power, uh, there's a tendency to think, well, I just want as much of it as I can. But remember, Paul was very ex 
explicit with the Thess Thessalonican church. And he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so there is a sense in which power is able to come into you, the Holy Spirit's power is able to come into you as you die, as you are broken, as you, that's why James, count it as joy when you encounter various trials. What that is is an emptying. And when we empty ourselves, he's able to put more power in us. And some people, I think, never look at the emptying part and they just want power. Well, sometimes there's not really room for God's presence. And so I'm oftentimes thankful as he breaks me. I pray often, whatever it takes, scariest prayer I ever prayed, whatever it takes, yeah. Lord, I want your power working through me. Wow. Well, we're moving toward the end of this passage. We have a couple of more videos in this series, and we hope you'll be back with us.